We'll go ahead and get started with our analemma unveiling, even though the sun is um, uh, trying not to cooperate here. I think the main thing will be to get an idea of what this display is here and maybe keep that in mind and then anytime you come back out here in the future you'll be able to see what the analemma really looks like. Really what this is um, is a, a celebration of a couple of events. One is to show us the relationship between our sun and the earth and the combination of the two movements. And as it is displayed here in our courtyard, which we've had here since 1984, we've had this uh, blank steel plate that uh, has mostly been um, a sunbathing porch, I think, <laughs> up till this time. And now we'll know what else it uh, provides. And I'll go through the explanation in just a little bit. But we are marking finally a completion of getting an idea of just what does occur on here on this plate for the analemma. This was completed, as I said, in 1984 by artist Dale Eldred, who unfortunately passed away after an accident uh, two years ago at the time that we had our 1993 flood here in Kansas City. Um, This really is displaying for us a, if you want to call it that, a dance of the sun. And it's due, if we can go through an explanation of what we have here, you see the months marked. And the month of May is up towards the top, and then you see June and July and August and September and October, November, December, all the way around through one year, and then a repeat of a large figure eight with an overblown bottom part of the eight. That path is what we call the analemma. And it is due to two principal motions of the sun. And you can see here, if we look at this in two dimensions, if you could imagine then a line right down the middle, if everything were perfect and the sun were on time every day, the sun would come across right on that line every day of the year. It doesn't. And another reason, another uh, uh, motion is it slides north and south throughout the year, as well as east and west. Now, I think in your notes uh, there's an explanation of this, but the north and south motion is the easiest to understand. The Earth in its rotation and uh, if you've probably seen diagrams of this before, this is a small model of the Earth, and the Earth rotates, of course, like this. But its axis of rotation is tilted 23 and a half degrees, so that as it rotates like this and goes around the sun, it keeps its tilt like this as it goes around. And therefore, as we look from Earth to see the sun, it's going to slide further north than further south in our sky throughout the year. An amount of 23 and a half degrees this way and 23 and a half degrees that way. So that is the motion. You had the pen there. If we could, if the Earth were standing straight up and not tilted on this platform here, um, we would see it moving across along the same path every day. But since it's tilted, it's going to slide either way like this. It's going to slide up and down this way, and then the sideways motion is another aspect. So the tilt is causing the motion, uh, I'm sorry, the motion in the north and south direction. Now. The other direction, the fact that it's not along this straight line here each day, uh, if this is the straight line, imaginary straight line through the middle, it's going to sometimes be on this side and sometimes it's going to be on that side of the straight line. 
when it is on this side of the straight line, the sun is fast. When it's on this side of the straight line, the sun is slow. Why? Well, our, that means we should change our clocks every day if the uh, sun is not on time. What we do actually in the time that we keep, because the sun's day is different, a slight bit, every day throughout the year, we take the average of all the days and use that as our clock day. Therefore, the sun is going to be a little bit fast and a little bit slow. And that's what we see as it goes up and down this way, north and south, it is also sliding this way. Why is it sliding fast or slow? That is due to the orbit of the Earth, around the kind of orbit around the Earth. And if the sun is here, I'm exaggerating the ellipse a little bit, it's actually closer to a circle, but as the, the Earth spins on its axis of rotation, as we were talking about, it's the same every, all the time, every day of the year. If we go centuries and centuries and centuries, it's actually slowing down a fraction of a second, but let's uh, not pay attention to that for the moment. So the spin is the same rate. However, as the Earth moves around in its orbit, the, di the distance away that it is for example, if we let one month go by from here to here, it's going to travel that far. And if we have the Earth over here and one month later, we might find that its position is here one month later. So this line across here uh, covers the same amount of area as these two lines cover when the Earth is moving slower out there. We have uh, Johannes Kepler to thank for that in the 1600s, who was the first one to figure that out, which means that the Earth is going slower there and faster here. When it gets close to the perihelion, it's going faster. Out here, it's slower. And because of that, as, it turn, as the Earth keeps spinning at the same rate and moves faster here, the Sun is sometimes in its orbit going to be ahead of time and sometimes slow. So that's what we're seeing here. There are some other minor fluctuations in that that are not really uh, worth uh, considering uh, when you talk about the uh, um, precession of the polar axis of Earth. But these are the two main considerations in seeing this figure eight, and it's traced out the same every place on Earth. If we went to another planet like Mars, Mars is tilted 25 degrees, so we would see something similar to this. And how much it goes this way or that would depend upon the kind of orbit it's in around the sun. We'd get a different one of these on every planet, but any place on Earth, you'll get the same one. Now, uh, if you have a handout on the last page, uh, an effect of what we see here is the equation uh, on the fourth page, there was a diagram that shows what I've been talking about, how the sun's slanted rays as it comes through that donut-shaped object up there. And I note here that we are at 114. We only have five more minutes for that sun to peek through. If not, we'll just have to it might be coming through. If anybody sees it, yell, okay? <laughs> um, while we're waiting, that equation of time that's listed on the last page shows you how fast or how slow in the various times of the year the sun is going to be. And for today, we expect the sun to be this is the first part of May, and this is the end of May here. May 5th should be about right here. So the sun, about 45 minutes ago, was about right here, the shadow of it, that is, and it should be moving over, it's getting close. The image of the crosshairs inside that donut should end up about right there today. And uh, people 
have asked me, how do you know that? Well, I did come out here for a whole year straight, every day that it was clear. Some of you around here have seen me do that with my big T-square and measuring the exact location. And so I put these all together just to give an image that we could have. Unfortunately, we can't leave this out here because of weather, but maybe we can figure out a way of getting this out here on displays when uh, someone would like to see how this event works. So that's what the equation of time is. It's the list of uh, the times the sun is going to be slow and fast, and you get that by taking the difference between the time that your clock says is noon uh, and the time that the sun says is noon. That difference is how much is fast or slow, and that is played out every day of the year. These lines that you see going across here, December 21st, November 21st, that means straight across from this line on the 21st of November is where the sun should be, the sun shadow. And notice that January 21st is going to be the same level on the other side of the imaginary central line. And then October, uh, September, in December are actually January 2nd or 3rd, which would be about right over there, is the time that the Earth is the closest to the Sun in its elliptical orbit around the Sun. And that really shows, when you stop to think of it, that the distance from the Sun is not what's causing our seasons on Earth, but the tilt of the axis of rotation. Uh, if your hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, it's going to be a hotter season. If you live in the southern hemisphere, it's going to be just the opposite because you're tilted away from the sun. So January would be the summer months in the uh, summer uh, in the southern hemisphere. Okay, um, I have uh, exactly one minute until the time. I see a little peak. getting closer. What you would see right now, oops, I thought, no, I guess not. Imagination playing tricks with me. <laughs> so if uh, each of those dots are actual measurements that I have not actually written the dates on, but I have them in my data. So the crosshair would be about right there uh, as reflected from the center of that small donut up there. Any questions? So. We are right now, at this moment, at the marking time. So if we see it a little bit later, it'll be sliding off this way a little bit. And yes, question? It might get there yet, huh? Well, it'd be nice if we at least saw the shadow a little bit. Any questions? That is local noon. I'm sorry, that's a good point. 119 is local noon here, and that is gauged on the difference in um, Central Standard Time is centered on 90 degrees west longitude, was just outside of St. Louis uh, a few miles. And from there to here is four plus some degrees and when you take the ratio of that to another 15 degrees, which is another hour, that ratio is 19 over 60, 60 minutes in an hour. So whether we, it's 119 if we have daylight time or it's 1219 if we have standard time at this location. So if you ever wanna check it, uh, 119 or 1219 is the time. Any other? There it is, there it is. It is. Great. I see it right there. So we're just a little, about a minute or a minute and a half off. Good work. Yeah. Well, we're not off. I mean, we're just late in our measurement. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.
I had already quit. <laughs> Yes, I'd made my adjustment by measuring from there down to the top of the, this uh, level. Mm -hmm. And I would have to say that the artist, uh, Dale Eldred, who did this, was quite accurate in his calculation of this because I've gone through and, and double-checked them. Uh, in case I didn't mention, I teach astronomy here, so... Uh, uh, this is my profession to look after things like this, so I felt a little obligated to do this. That's why I spent the time to check it out. But his measurements are very, very accurate. Well, thank you for coming out. <laughs>